All right, so let's prove that this figure here is a rhombus, okay? So we're doing, we're doing a proof. So the first thing is, we're gonna give all the givens. They have all the givens here. I like to separate the givens into their own steps, but this is not mine, so I kinda of stole it. So uh, we're gonna be given that HS is congruent to SB, and that RS is congruent to SO, and that HR is congruent to HO, behave yourself. So HR is congruent to HO. So prove this is a rhombus, okay? Besides laughing at the fact that there's a side labeled HO. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the triangles that we can prove here. So I've already been given enough information to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And remember, here's your possibilities again. I'm gonna keep writing these so you remember them. Okay, this is a simple one, side, side, side. So I can say triangle RSH. Now since I said RSH, I went from two marks to one mark, I have to call this one OSH, like Oshkosh, bagosh. And that is by side, side, side. I don't like that it has the little deals on there. That's by side, 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 okay? So that's how I know those two triangles are congruent. Let me open up a little bit here, okay. So now, now that I know the triangles are congruent, how do I know RHOB is a parallelogram? Well, that's kind of a tough one, right? How do I know it's a parallelogram? Well, if it's a parallelogram, what do you know about the diagonals in a parallelogram? Because the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then it's a parallelogram. And if you look at what we've just proven, I know that S is the midpoint of RO and S is the midpoint of BH, okay? So now that I know it's a parallelogram, how can I say it's a rhombus? Well, what do you know about a parallelogram? The opposite sides are congruent. So if that's three, that's gotta be the same, and that's gotta be the same. So I know since opposite sides congruent, Opposite, congruent opposite sides of a parallelogram make a rhombus. And what you want to add in here is four, because there's four sides. This is not really well written. So since the four, all four sides are congruent, all four sides are congruent. And that's how you can show that it is a rhombus, okay? So that's how we can prove it's a rhombus. Now let's do something with trapezoids, okay? On the trapezoids, complete the statement and give the reason that justifies the statement. I can read the directions, aren't you proud of me? So it says, given that this is a trapezoid, again, we're just justifying here. This is not a proof, there's no proof here. We're just justifying. If I know it's a trapezoid, I know a couple of things. It has one pair, of opposite parallel sides and it has one pair of opposite non-parallel sides. The opposite parallel sides are called the bases and the non-parallel sides are called the legs. So if I know it's a trapezoid, then I know that TR is parallel to AP. Okay, TR is parallel to AP because a trapezoid has parallel bases. A trapezoid has parallel bases, okay. I know that angle T, I'll use a different color here. Uh, I know that angle T and angle A, don't laugh, are supplementary because in a trapezoid, you've got parallel lines. So same side interior angles are congruent. 
So by the same token, R is congruent to P, or, or sorry, R and P are supplementary. By the same thing, same side, interior angles are congruent. So that's what we're using for the trapezoid. Okay, so let's look at one trapezoid proof. We're almost done here. Okay, complete the following. All right. Or sorry, let's give it an isosceles trapezoid. I'm sorry, we're not going to do a proof here. We're actually going to use the uh, trapezoid. So an isosceles trapezoid has one pair of opposite parallel sides, one pair of opposite non-parallel sides, and it has congruent legs, which is the one pair of, and, the, and it's got congruent diagonals. Write all this down. Okay, so one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, those are your bases, and it tells you that these are your bases. Okay, so these are your bases. So RQ and that should say RO. RO is parallel to QP. This is the one that has all kinds of fun mistakes in it. And that's because the trapezoid has parallel bases. Trapezoid's got parallel bases. Okay, RO, and that should say Q. RQ is congruent to OP because isosceles trapezoid has congruent legs. And it's, I know it's isosceles. They tell me up there it's isosceles. So that's how I know RQ and OP are congruent. So now I'm going to look at angle O. Angle O is congruent to angle R. And that's because the isosceles trapezoid has congruent base angles. That's one thing I forgot to put in there. Okay, it also has congruent base angles. My bad. It's got congruent base angles. Okay, so O is congruent to R and Q is congruent to P. Again, that's because an isosceles trapezoid has congruent base angles. Now we're going to draw the diagonals because we can. Two points make a line, so I'm going to draw QO and I'm going to draw RP. Okay. QO is congruent to RP because an isosceles trapezoid has what? Congruent diagonals. An isosceles trapezoid has congruent diagonals. This is a good practice for you to remember all of the characteristics of a trapezoid and an isosceles trapezoid. So let's move to the next. And angle QRP, that's this one right here. QRP is this guy. QRP is congruent. QRP is congruent to Q, whoops, QRP is to POQ, is congruent to this guy. QRP, and, now there's two different ways you can look at this. We're not proving right now, but what we would ultimately end up be able, being able to prove is that these two triangles, this one and this one are congruent by side angle side. Then because we could say those are congruent, we could use CPCTC to establish those two, which is kind of hard to see. And then we have RQO, which is this one, and that would be congruent to OPR. 
not OPP, as much as you would want it to be OPP. And again, that would be a CPCTC because of congruent triangles. So that's the characteristics of an isosceles trapezoid. So you can use the characteristics of a trapezoid to find and prove things. Now remember, when you look at these, regular trapezoid, or sorry, a standard trapezoid, one pair of parallel bases, one pair of non-parallel legs, but remember, the parallel lines create same side interiors, they're supplementary. Isosceles trapezoid opens up a whole new ball of wax. The base angles are now congruent, so these guys would be congruent, and those guys would be congruent. You've got your opposite pair of bases, parallel, your opposite pair of sides, legs, that are non-parallel, and in an isosceles trapezoid they are congruent. Then you've got the diagonals are congruent in the isosceles. Okay, so you have all those extra characteristics that come into play when you do an isosceles trapezoid.